There's no mistaking Land Rover products, the green oval badge, a square-jawed silhouette, and the pronouncement on the hood. This one, uh, this one's a little different. Land Rover calls the Velar the avant-garde Range Rover. It gives the brand something to compete with against crossovers like the Lexus RX, Mercedes GLE, and Cadillac XT5. But it is a Land Rover, so even though the Velar looks like it majored in modern art history, it's fairly good at rock climbing too. What does Velar mean? Well, apparently it springs from the Italian word velare, which means to veil or cover, which makes perfect sense considering the way Land Rover first used the name. Back in the late 1960s, when it was developing an all new rig, it put these badges on all the pre-production prototypes to confuse people. Turns out that vehicle was the first Range Rover. If you remember, that Range Rover was remarkably clean and elegant for its day. Velar's design, penned by a team led by Jerry McGovern, takes up the minimalist mantle. This is a mid-level R-Dynamic SE model. Peek beneath the svelte skin and you'll find the same aluminum bones used by Jaguar's F-Pace, but as expected, Land Rover tunes this chassis for off-road prowess. I didn't push it there, but I can show you how simple it would be to venture into the wilderness while looking smashing. The drive modes, there are six of them, are just a tap away or use this multifunction knob. More on that later. Add the optional air suspension and there's extra ground clearance. There's even a view forward, so those stylish body panels won't get pranged by tree stumps. A four-cylinder turbo diesel and supercharged V6 are available. This particular Velar runs with a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder with 247 horsepower. The theater of watching everything whir into place is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm easily amused. Torque is rated at 269 pound-feet. There are eight speeds in the transmission. The rotary controller is okay. Even if you don't use the manual shift paddles, they look and feel great. Lovely day outside. A reminder, I am not going to test this off-road, even though it is extremely capable. One, the off-road park I normally use is closed, and two, I'm not gonna be responsible for messing up those 20-inch wheels. The Turbo 4's power is fine, 0 to 60 briskly happens in about 6.5 seconds. In dry conditions, anyway. Those looking for strong launches off the line should consider the V6 option. Like many turbo engines, there's a brief pause as power builds, and then there's plenty of torque. Maybe because I've experienced the lovely growl of the V8 in a Range Rover, I find the engine note here a little unremarkable. Even with a low-profile roofline, Velar's visibility is quite good. This one is equipped with a heated windshield that produces a very slight moray effect occasionally. Plan on towing? It can tug nearly 5,300 pounds. The V6 will handle a couple extra hundred. Velar doesn't have the sporty nature of Jaguar's F-Pace. It's less car-like in its dynamic, though it's not trucky. It's, I guess for lack of a better term, more Range Rover-y. The ride quality is on the firm side, with well-controlled body movements. No one is getting seasick here. There are companies that have had a hard time calibrating their 8, 9, and 10-speed transmissions to shift smoothly. Land Rover is not one of them. This is very good. It's as seamless as the design, and I can tell you the sleek styling gets attention. The general public simply likes the look. Range Rover aficionados do a double take before realizing, ah, it's a new model. Velar's EPA fuel economy rating is slightly better than the Cadillac, Lexus, and Mercedes, but just a tick lower than the Jag. One thing about the throttle response, under hard acceleration and you lift your foot off the throttle, it seems to continue to accelerate for just a split second. Also, under very light pressure on the gas, I found a unique low frequency thrumming inside the cabin, something my microphone can't pick up. Adaptive cruise control and automatic emergency braking is standard. The collision warning system is calibrated... a bit too sensitive for my taste.
Land Rover is known as much for its lovely interiors as off-road prowess, Velar is no different. If you want sustainable materials, they can be ordered up. I've seen three different design treatments I would have a tough time choosing. Hardware feels as solid as it looks. Got to love the pattern in the heated and vented seats. How British. Between the ambiance and the excellent Meridian sound system that's worth every penny, I could hang out here all day. One big gripe, the action here feels like something from a 1990s Hyundai. Otherwise, owners will find convenient storage. These are also sliding armrests, not just separate console covers. The overall vibe is as sleek as sleek can be. That goes for interfacing with the car as well. Land Rover calls the UI Touch Pro Duo, and it's a high fashion statement. Like couture clothing, it isn't always practical. It sometimes requires an extra page selection or touch to get what you want. Also, these knobs change function, so it might adjust drive mode, seat heaters, or the intensity of the massage. Yes, the chairs offer a pretty decent shiatsu. The changing function is something you kind of need to keep track of. The instrument cluster is a big display and it can be configured just about any way the driver wants. I'm five foot nine, headroom is good, knee and legroom is good, so is footroom. The cushions are high enough so that thighs are well supported. They don't slide fore and aft to max out leg or cargo room, but the seat backs get a motorized recline. Power ports, check. A climate zone too, though I'm surprised there is no heated seat feature to pamper guests on this particular model. Same with integrated side sunshades. Two stylish adventurers will be coddled back here, and three will be okay for shorter trips. It all looks great with the giant glass roof. A unique option is the activity key. An RFID chip is embedded in this Fitbit-like bracelet. It allows the transponder key to be left in the car. Touching the waterproof bracelet here locks the vehicle and deactivates the key. So in the event of a break-in while you're out bird watching, the Velar can't be started. Or you could save the $500 and just take the key with you. Velar is larger than Evoke, so it should take on more cargo. <laughs> Operative word should, that's why I test. This large lip either keeps things from sliding out when parked on a steep hill or adds to the load height, uh, take your pick. Yes, there's a spare, step up to a full-sized one for $410. Call me a cargo hold snob, but I find 40-20-40 seats to be a big help, especially when keeping skis safe when heading to the slopes with three friends, something this vehicle will probably do. As for space, it easily bests Little Brother evokes five packs, but at eight, it's not as spacious as Lexus RX or Cadillac XT5. While Velar starts at a reasonable price, just under $50,000, the R Dynamic SE model I'm driving is optioned up closer to the 73 grand mark. It can climb higher. The V6 powered first edition model, which is loaded, is over 89,000 bucks. That's about where a full on Range Rover begins. Show some restraint, and a nicely equipped model runs for about $65,000. That buys a lot of comfort, style, and capability. Despite the origins of the name, Velar is a vehicle many would love to be seen in. I try my best to show you the capabilities of vehicles, though I didn't have the ability to test off-road. I can show you some footage that Land Rover has supplied. This is not extreme stuff. I'm sure that the Velar can tackle more than this, but I'm willing to bet that most owners won't go much further, especially if they're afraid of heights. Nice view here. I think this is Norway. You made it to the very end. You deserve a fun fact. All of the letters in the name Velar can be found in Land Rover, C-V-L-A-R. And it's velare, that means veil or cover, not volare, which is Italian for love, or the old Chrysler sedan. Take your pick. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.